<coughs> entrance antiphon. <coughs> the Lord is the strength of his people, a saving refuge for the one he has anointed. Save your people, Lord, and bless your heritage and govern them, govern them forever. <coughs> Welcome, everyone, to the celebration of this Holy Eucharist. I would invite you to gather your praise and your thanksgiving and adoration to offer to the Lord, and also any prayers or intercessions that you want to bring to Him. Along with your intercessions and intentions, my intercession, uh, intention for today is for Diana Sinclair. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. Sennacherib, king of Assyria, sent envoys to Hezekiah with this message. Thus shall you say to Hezekiah, king of Judah, do not let your God on whom you rely deceive you but by saying that Jerusalem will not be handed over to the king of Assyria. You have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all other countries. They doom them. Will you then be saved? Hezekiah took the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. Then he went up to the temple of the Lord and spreading it out before him, he prayed in the Lord's presence, O Lord God of Israel, enthroned upon the cherubim, you alone are God over all the kings of the earth. You have made the heavens and the earth. Incline your ear, O Lord, and listen. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see. Hear the words of Sennacherib, which he sent to taunt the living God. Truly, O Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste the nations and their lands and cast their gods into the fire. They destroyed them because they were not gods, but the work of human hands, wood and stone. Therefore, O Lord our God, save us from the power of this man, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you alone, O Lord, our God. Then Isaiah, son of Amos, sent this message to Hezekiah. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, in answer to your prayer for help against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, I have listened. This is the word the Lord has spoken concerning him. She despises you, laughs you to scorn, the virgin daughter Zion. Behind you she wags her head, daughter Jerusalem. For out of Jerusalem shall come a remnant, and from Mount Zion survivors. The zeal of the Lord of hosts shall do this. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not reach this city, nor shoot an arrow at it, nor come before it with a shield, nor cast up siege works against it. He shall return by the same way he came without entering the city, says the Lord. I will shield and save the city for my own sake and for the sake of my servant, David. That night, the angel of the Lord went forth and struck down 185,000 men in the Assyrian camp. So Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, broke camp and went back home to Nineveh. The word of the Lord. God upholds his city forever. God upholds his city forever. Great is the Lord and holy to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain, fairest of heights, is the joy of all the earth. God upholds his city forever. Mount Zion 
the recesses of the north, is the city of the great king. God is with her castles, renowned as he as a stronghold. God upholds his city forever. O God, we ponder your mercy within your temple. As your name, O God, so also your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Of justice, your right hand is full. God upholds his city forever. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not give what is holy to dogs, or throw your pearls before swine, lest they trample them underfoot and turn and tear you to pieces. Do to others whatever you would have them do to you. This is the law and the prophets. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the, and the road broad that leads to destruction. And those who enter through it are many. How narrow the gate and constricted the road that leads to life. And those who find it are few. The Gospel of the Lord. The good Lord taught me a lesson early on in my priesthood. I was in my first assignment in Carroll, and I uh, was taking the Eucharist around to people. Uh, and there was one place where you would go into these apartments, and it had an elevator. And I got into the elevator, and it just as I got into the elevator, um, this uh, other guy just kind of snuck on the elevator. He was wearing a tattered coat, and it had like uh, some Cheerios on it right over here, and some spots, some coffee stains, and and his hair was all scruffy, and he didn't have very good teeth, and um, he, uh, he really smelled. You know, if, if you ever watch uh, Peanuts, you know, Pigpen, he, he kind of would remind you of Pigpen a little bit. And I remember um, on be, having the Eucharist with me and being on the elevator as the doors closed, and I remember my initial human reaction was to just kind of back up as far as I could and kind of hold my breath a little bit. But I had one of those nice little images in the, the Life of the Spirit seminars. I'm talking about one of the gifts the Lord can give any of you is a gift to kind of see images in your head. It's no big mystical experience. It's just a simple gift of the Holy Spirit where uh, I, I, in my mind's eye, the Lord gave me a little, little image of this guy reaching up to the top of his head and unzipping a beggar, poor, smelly beggar pig pen suit. And he, and he unzipped it. And out from this suit that he unzipped, I'm just, I'm just seeing this in my head as I'm in, there, in the elevator with him, comes this most glowing, gorgeous, glowing, beautiful, holy, attractive, strong person and individual. And the Lord taught me a lesson that day. And they're early on in my priesthood. And it's like he said, don't look at the exterior of anyone Look at who they are on the inside. You know, we hear all sorts about racial discrimination, discrimination, religious discrimination, all over the place. What's the opposite of discrimination? Indiscrimination. The Lord calls us to love indiscriminately. We have to look at every single human being and say, you know, I need to follow the golden rule, you know, Treat other people the way you would have them treat you. Why do we do this? Why? Because every single, now hear me, every single human being made in the image and likeness of God was created by God for God. It is God's dream that every human person on earth come to know him, love him, serve him, 
and then one day be a glowing saint in heaven. It is not the will of God. Jesus said, it is not the will of my Father that any of these should be lost. Well, in that same little uh, first assignment, it was a great first assignment, uh, I was telling the kids about, about something. I said, you know, you have, to, you have to put on your Jesus glasses. Do you have your Jesus glasses on today? Do you know what they are? When you put your Jesus glasses on, you no longer see intelligent people and stupid people and, and attractive people and ugly people. and You, you don't see anything. When, when you put your Jesus glasses on, the only thing you see, you look through all the exterior, you don't see color or anything. All you see is this soul made in God's image and likeness that is called by God to be forever in heaven. Isn't that beautiful? So I told the kids, I said, so do you all have your Jesus glasses on? They're going, yes, we do. Yes, Father, we do. You know how little kids are so great. Well, there's one little kid out in the crowd with his arms like this going. And well, of course, I had to call him out on it, right? I said, I said, hey, what, what's your problem? Why are you shaking your head? No. He said, I have my Jesus contacts in. Okay, fine. Do you have your Jesus laser surgery? I don't know. Whatever it takes, make sure and start to look at people the way God looks at them. Now, Jesus does give us a warning in the gospel today. Jesus makes it very clear to us in the gospel that, um, you know, don't throw your pearls before swine. And, uh, you know, you don't have to just put yourself out there to be trampled. Because there, there, are, there are some people in the world that are pretty mean. Now, let me just talk about this. You, ever, you see a person, you go, oh, that person, that person is a living saint. Father Peter, Father Peter is a living saint. He's such a kind, loving, joyful, good guy. He's a living saint. But you know what? Some of the mystics have told us that when somebody is unredeemed and has emptied out the Holy Spirit and given themselves over to the, the devil, people can become living devils too. Really, really, almost literally possessed living devils. But you know what the good news is? Even if somebody is a living devil, as long as they can draw breath, there is a possibility for them to repent and turn back to the Lord and be filled with the Holy Spirit and make their way to heaven. That's why the church is against the death penalty, because, because we, we don't want to take somebody's life before, because they might be able to have at that last moment when they're 93 in prison say, oh, now I get it. Jesus, I'm going to follow you. I believe in you, God. So today's lesson is a very strong lesson. It's a very clear lesson that we need to love indiscriminately. We don't have to place ourselves in danger, but we have to stop being averted from people that aren't like us and start loving with the heart of Christ. And if we do that, we do that. You know, people don't change so that they can be, uh, be loved. Rather, they're loved so that they'll change and grow. Love has the power of creative transformation. Love yourself first enough to accept the Lord and obey him, and then you will be able to love others, and you will lead them to himself. Let us now bring our prayers to the Lord. For all in the church who teach the faith, may the perfection of God's grace be upon them. We pray to the Lord. For our community leaders, may the Holy Spirit guide them in justly serving those whom they represent without any kind of discrimination. We pray to the Lord. For all who are ill in mind, body, or spirit, may the Lord who is healer, is healer, the Lord who is healer of all bring them comfort and relief. We pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered today, may God's generous love strengthen us in charity and flow through us in all we do. We pray to the Lord. And for those who have died, may they behold God face to face this day. We pray to the Lord. And for the deepest prayers of our hearts, always praying for protection against the unborn and for respect for life from conception to natural death. And all of our other intentions now of our heart, we bring them to the Lord. Hear us. We pray to the Lord. Merciful Father, hear and answer the prayers we bring before you through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, and all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Walker, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Communion Antiphon. I am the good shepherd, and I lay down my life for my sheep, says the Lord. At this time, we're very aware that the Lord is present in our midst whenever we gather in his name. Jesus, we love you. We accept you into our hearts, and we give our hearts back to you. Bring us into a beautiful spiritual communion with you. And through our communion with you, bring us into union with the Father and the Holy Spirit into the beautiful and warm embrace of the Holy Trinity. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder, today, later on, I'll be putting on catechism, I think it's either 14 or 15, I'm going to be talking about God's providence and why does God allow evil. Those are the two things I'm going to talk under the category of believe in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth. Those are a couple of things that providence and why does God allow evil, the problem of evil. You're invited again to join us for Mass tomorrow, and I'm going to still orient that, even though we're in summertime, towards our youth. So scrape up your children and grandchildren and bring them to the, uh, this virtual Mass. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all other evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. You see me sweating today at Mass. Remind me never to do a bike ride right before Mass. I'm still sweating. That's good, though. <laughs>